Joining me now live in the studio is the independent member for Wentworth, Allegra Spender. Thanks so much for your time. Some really emotional contributions, weren't there, from some of your your counterparts, the new MPs? Yeah, there were. I think um, across the floor, I think people really brought their personal stories, I think, to the chamber. And I think the stories of, you know, migration were really strong. I think of, you know, bushfires, of, you know, people's, you know, coming out. There's some really, really strong mo um, themes and mo moments in those speeches. It looks like your first speech will be uh, next week, most likely Tuesday. Yeah. Have you thought about the sort of broad themes yeah, you want I, to bring to that? <laughs> well, look, I think um, I was just talking to your colleague about this out the front. I think I've got about 10 first speeches, I want to say. Yeah. So I think it's a lot about the community that sent me because that's really important. I'm here as a community independent. Um, but it's also about my own story, which, you know, a migrant mama, mum and then, you know, my, my family story, which is more of a political story. So that will that will be part of it. Yeah, indeed. It, it is certainly the political uh, lineage is there as well. But in, on, on the climate issue, which, of course, was central to your campaign, let's talk about the Labor Party bill and the emissions targets that mm. they're seeking to legislate. Will you vote in favour of it, even though it's not as ambitious as you'd like? Look, I will be voting in favour of the bill. I think we've had some really constructive conversations with Chris Bowen. I think a number of um, changes have been already adopted into the bill because of those discussions with the crossbench. And I expect, you know, that myself and others will move amendments next week to the bill. But fundamentally, I think it's really important to legislate 43% um, by 2030 and, and net zero by 2050. Because I think if we have those in legislation, business has certainty and business needs certainty to be able to plan. Do you I think it also would mark somewhat of an end of the sort of the climate wars? I certainly hope so. I think that the election has been a clear, strong win for those who want to see real climate action. And I think this is now about the hard work of really delivering on that. The, the Teal independence, uh, as you and, and your colleagues are known, obviously parallel to that were a number of new Green MPs, mm. but the Greens aren't always as pragmatic as some other political parties. Mm. Do you think that they will get on board? Should they get on board? Look, I think, you know, whether they do, I think that will be a matter for the Greens, but I certainly hope that the legislation is passed. I hope that they, they get on board. I frankly would wish that the Liberal Party or Coalition would get on board on this, but I, I'm not sure that there's much prospect of that. I think if we could have really across the, the country support for this, that would be the true end to the climate wars and then give the Australian communities um, safety that we're moving on. As we wrap up this first parliamentary week, what are the other policy priorities that you bring mm. to Canberra? Look, I think climate's one and then absolutely integrity is another. Um, but I'm also an economist and a, a person who, who's run a lot of businesses. And so for me, I think the economic priorities are really crucial. You know, issues around migration, issues around, you know, cost of living and how we deal with that and issues around productivity and the fact that we haven't had real wage growth for so many years. These are absolutely crucial issues. And so these are ones I'll be following very carefully. And migration, mm. in, in that sense, you're talking about the labour shortages we're seeing right now? Absolutely. Every business I talk to is facing labour shortages and that is fueling. I think, some of the inflation that we are seeing. And it is not both, you know, skilled migration, permanent migration, but it's also the backpackers and the students. You know, that in my electorate, this is a really, really big issue. A lot of talk about this government bringing in a new type of politics, being more constructive. The Chamber's still very robust, isn't it, during question time? Do you think that that's always the way of politics? Look, actually, I, I, I think robust is... is um, is being charitable to it. I think that in so many cases, it's actually not furthering the debate on what are the most important issues of the day. And so I think that the government and the opposition can absolutely pick up their socks in terms of making sure that they're answering the questions that the Australian people care about. This isn't a contest between the two of them because it so much feels like they're just having a go at each other. This is the chance to answer to the Australian people about the most important issues of the day. So, uh, you know, an old cliche... More work to do. You'd like to have yeah, more work to do on that new <laughs> culture. Think, yeah. But basically you want more... Uh, you want them to shed more light rather than the heat that we're Yeah, seeing. exactly right. I have to say, coming into the chamber for the first time and just being the wave of, you know, catcalling, going, wow, I, f I feel like I'm in a football game, not in a respectful debate. So you'll be you and your colleagues trying to do your bit from the, the, the uh, independent and the crossbench, but the, the government also cutting your staff mm. as a first move. Mm. What was your reaction to that? Look, um, I'm, you know, 
I want to do the best I can for the people of Wentworth. And I know as an independent, you know, I think there are already 12 bills that I need to get across in the very first week. And realistically, to do that without the support of, you know, a party infrastructure is really difficult. And so I think the government, I think, you know, I, I disagree with that decision. And I also don't think it should really be a political decision that can be made on the behest of the Prime Minister. I think it should be one that really looks at what is the workload, because I'm very conscious also of the workload of people in this off, in this parliament and what that means to staffers when, when staffing is cut. Will you seek to bring your electorate staff down to Canberra more? Is that what you're looking at doing, to I've... try and fill the gap? Yeah, well, I will do that partly, but I'm really relying on the volunteers of Wentworth, you know, stepping up to help cover the electoral duties, stepping up to... Because I don't want to sacrifice support to my community, you know, for the visa applications, for the NDIS concerns that they have, um, you know, just to fulfil the parliament. So I'm, I'm really trying to be very creative in trying to deal with this. And, and finally, on reflection, why, why did you win? As you look back at that victory... Look, I one. think... I think, honestly, the people of my community want their values represented. We are economically focused, we are business focused, we care about the environment and we're socially progressive. And I think those are the values they wanted to see in Parliament, in their representative. Allegra Spender, appreciate your time. We'll stay in touch and okay. uh, yeah, we'll see you next week for your first speech. Thanks so much, Kieran.